Good afternoon, everybody. I'm your host, Crystal, and this is another edition of the 9 O'Clock Meltdown podcast style. And over Skype, I have my very first YouTuber, Bruce Fumi. Hello, sir. Hello. <laughs> Wonderful. And you have a... the first time anyone's ever described me as a YouTuber. What? That's the first time somebody's... It's the first time in my life I've ever been introduced as a YouTuber. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Well, that seems because ridiculous. Because I've failed at a lot of things in life. Yeah. 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 Um, I've been a, a, a physics teacher, a financial advisor. Uh, I've done other stuff. I've uh-huh. failed at lots of shit. And <laughs> it's only because I was a tour guide and a stand-up comic. And then uh, COVID came along and decided that both those jobs were uh, no longer required by anyone and I started to do YouTube mm-hmm. never for a minute thinking that it would do you know what I mean it was just that something to fill the time because remember when COVID started yep um, like fat middle aged men was were the target audience so my wife said you're not leaving the house and uh, so I had to start doing something and I've now got I've woke up on New Year's morning with COVID nowadays because we've all been vaccinated I know that you've got some crazy shit going on on your side of the Atlantic yes but here everyone's vaccinated and you know it's just it's a minor inconvenience it's like a cough and a, a bit of a fever and mm-hmm. you know you get on with it yeah. um, but at the time back then it was like nobody leave the house right mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. I started making YouTube videos but it was only when you said a YouTuber, a real nobody's ever called me that before. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> right? People have called me in in my past. People have said, "Oh, the teacher, or the stand-up comic, or the tour guy." But that is the first time everyone's gone, "Ah, this YouTuber." You know what I mean? So that's kind of that's a that's a seminal moment in my life. Well, good, good. Yeah. I'm glad. Yeah. I'm I'm yeah. so glad I'm able to kind of bring it full circle Uh, so bruce i ended up kind of stumbling upon your videos on youtube i i love history and i i especially love history about uh scotland and the uk that's where most of my ancestry is from um i used to watch british television shows with my mom when i was a little kid you know so i i have this love of britain and in scotland and you popped up and immediately i thought who is this guy with a goatee and dreadlocks and yeah. <laughs> talking about yeah. Scotland? So what yeah. gripped me it, first... It, it really messes with your racial preconceptions, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. A little yeah. bit, yeah. yes. Uh, yeah. So what gripped me first was your aesthetic. But then I started doing research and started watching a couple of your videos. I think the first one I had watched was your video on uh, Scotland slavery. Which is not, right, uh, which is not yeah. something that at least us in the U.S. we're not necessarily taught about it. We're we're taught about you know our, our own dark past with slavery and things like that. But mm. we're not really taught that the rest of the world also dealt with this in in different ways mm. as well. In different ways and in, in mm-hmm. different. And, and I think what's in, and and in different level. Like the whole point I'm making that video is that. Slavery is not um, a binary thing, mm-hmm. but an analog thing. It's not digital; it's analog. Do you know what I mean? So there are yeah. lots of, you know, what I mean from minor inconveniences mm-hmm. all the way up to chattel slavery. There's yeah. lots of stages along the way. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And um, and some people would debate whether the, what I described in that video, and I think it was a story that needed to be told because most Scottish people don't realise what went on here. And it, but what what was interesting. Basically, people uh, people who were coal miners here back in the 16th, 17th, 18th century were tied to, bound to their employer kind of thing, right? Yeah. And it, because of the need, and it started off with the need for, um, the economic need, oh, it's important, so you can't, if these guys leave the employer, so, but gradually, it became more and more uh it, it, they became more and more encumbered you mm-hmm. know what I mean? and the point I wanted to make in the video was that this could happen to any of us today do you know what I mean and that you know there's a continuum when because everyone will complain about minor inconveniences do you know what I mean 
<laughs> and I, I made the point about here people there's no big debate about vaccines uh, whereas over your way there's what we it seems to us this crazy kind of debate about vaccines inconvenience if you don't mm-hmm. want that and your employer goes no you've got to do that hold up that's the start of the you know what I mean mm-hmm. so right. whilst you know we wouldn't have the level of debate that you guys got there it is at the very start of that inconvenience that gradually you know what I mean if, mm-hmm. you, if you continue on down the road mm-hmm. Right, and I don't want to get into your debate. <laughs> <laughs> you you want to stay safe on your you're side crazy. of the pond. Say again. <laughs> you want to stay safe on your side of the pond. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, that was my point. Is that you know, it's it's not a it's not a binary thing. You know, yeah. It's, yeah. So we all suffer different levels of uh, compulsion mm. at various stages. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And uh, we all need to be careful. And, uh, and protect democracy right. as well. Mm-hmm. But what was interesting is because the way the YouTube, it's interesting that there was the first one you saw because, the, you know, the YouTube algorithm shows yeah. it to people that watch my videos, mm-hmm. that have been watching my videos about Scottish history. Yeah. And then based on their reaction, then it goes, oh, we'll show it to some more people. And so it suddenly exposed me to way more Americans than previously. Mm. Yeah. We've got very firm ideas about what slavery is because mm-hmm. they're kind of caught up in their own little world. Do you know what I mean? Right, right. And I say their own little world. It's a bit like Londoners don't see beyond London. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Glasgow is the biggest town in Scotland and Glaswegians don't see beyond... Their, you know, and Americans mm-hmm. don't see beyond their borders. Do you know what I mean? Oh, right? it's like saying people so, here in Duluth don't see beyond Duluth. So... <laughs> Is Duluth a big place? Yes. Yeah. Is no. Okay. No. Duluth is very small. <laughs> All right. Okay. I, so. So yes. Um, yes. Yeah. But normally, people that are in big metropolitan, cosmopolitan places mm. <clears throat> that have got a lot going on. They kind of think this is the world. Do you know what I mean? Yep. And yep. similarly, because the US has got a big population, um, you know, there's all sorts of different geographies and you could live your life in the US and they tell me most people do without ever leaving do you know what I mean oh, yeah. and they don't look beyond their their borders kind of mm-hmm. thing and um, so when they are introduced to this idea and the word slavery I think is a problem because mm-hmm. if you used the word um, serfdom they right. would have they would have come at it very differently do you know what I mean mm-hmm. but because people people watch videos through a filter oh definitely of prejudice do you know what I mean mm-hmm. and you, every video you get comments from people and you're going but I said that in the video do you know what I mean yeah. but they don't watch the video they just say, oh this is a video about a subject that triggers me and I've got a lot of, a lot of emotional stuff that I want to offload and mm-hmm. irrespective of what the guy says I'm going to offload that now do you know what I mean mm-hmm. and that's that's a human quality that's got nothing to do with borders you know what I mean yeah. that's just a human quality mm-hmm. so it was interesting to see how as that video got exposure across the Atlantic how the comments changed and how the demographic that watched it changed mm. uh, that, that was really interesting do you know what I mean mm-hmm. so like for the last uh, 28 days yeah. The biggest group watching my videos are from the USA. Okay? Whereas mm-hmm. normally the biggest group are from the UK. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So that one video has kind of changed the kind of perspective. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. um, hopefully they'll enjoy some of the other ones. <laughs> oh, yes. I uh, Like I said, yeah, right Yeah, me. the slavery video was okay, but the rest of it's shit. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, whatever. Um, I was actually watching one of your videos uh, entitled uh, The Black Bitch. Um, oh, before... no! That, 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 <laughs> Dale did that a whole deal, do you know what I mean? And then people that you only ever talks about race. You know, no! No, 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 that's <laughs> not what it's about. It was about race. It was <laughs> about race, you know what I mean? Right, right. Sure. So it's, it's interesting <laughs> that you bring that up because I've found, and, you know, I... I kind of went to school for journalism. That's not my complete uh, degree or anything, but I hung out with a lot of journalism kids, and and I got started at WPR. And this in itself. What's that? What's WPR? Oh, uh, WPR is Wisconsin Public Radio. 
So, oh, right, okay. yeah, so it's a facet of national public radio. So it's a lot like our BBC. Anyway, my point being, and to something that you brought up as well, it's interesting that people just read the titles of something and don't actually either read the descriptor or actually watch the video. They uh, do things very based on titles and, yeah, just really quick clips now. And that's not how I was taught. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's just, it's very interesting to kind of see how those things have changed recently. Yes, your your video on uh, Black Bitch is, has nothing to do with race. It actually has something to do with a dog. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. And the yeah. name of a tavern. It's, it, yeah, it's <laughs> integral to the history of a, a town called Linlithgow. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And because there was this heroic dog back in the 12th century that's become the crest of the town. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, the, 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 so this company wants to change the name of a pub called the Black Bitch because people will feel uncomfortable. You know, like, but no, why would people? It's got nothing to do with it. Mm -hmm. You're trying to impose a, a kind of so it's kind of uh, crazy. But but yeah, people people do nowadays. I think, and I don't know if it was different before. Media was different before, but I don't think people change. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Our, mm -hmm. our, our mode of consumption changes yes but you know when people were during the jacobite peak do you watch outlander yes yes are you aware about right so yep. you look at the propaganda hmm. at that period and people were still making knee-jerk comments about you know without really evaluating situations and you know what i mean being just as crazy as we are now because you've got over there, you've got these crazy divisions politically. Now here, yeah. we've got crazy divisions politically. And I always have to be careful any time that I mention anything that has to do with Scottish independence. You know that people are going to be in the comments section going crazy, right? And they're not listening. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't matter. what I, I did one the other week about this this town in England that technically was given to David I of Scotland in the 12th century, mm. but has never been taken back. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So in it, I got, I got into conversations about, you know, the nature of the strange setup in the UK and, um, you know, the constitutional arrangements. And, of course, I mentioned the whole thing because the, the mayor of Doncaster had said if Scotland has an independence referendum, we should get a vote. And I gave my opinion about the whole democratic thing surrounding it without mentioning my opinion on the actual issue. And people lost their shit, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, um, because people are so... That's our thing. You've got your thing, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But that's our thing, is the whole independence mm -hmm. thing. You know? mm -hmm. And so not everyone in Scotland's battling for independence. The, the problem is that people are battling against each other, which is the best thing possible for a colonial government, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That you want people battling against each other, um, and and that's 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 what we have. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, yes. Yeah. <laughs> in fact, that when the when the when the whole independence thing started, well, not started. For those of you, because a lot of your listeners are taken in the US, yeah, Correct. or Canada, uh, people for people in the US. England is the bottom two thirds of the Great Britain. Yes. Great Britain is the big island in the archipelago, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. The UK is the big island of Great Britain, plus all the little islands around it and the northern part of Ireland, yeah? Right, right. Apart from the Channel Islands and the Isle of Man, which aren't in the UK or Great Britain. But they are in the British Isles. Okay, mm -hmm. so that now that's simplified for you. All right. But yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people I hear it drives me crazy, and you, you watch in US TV programs they talk about England, and what they really mean is the UK. Right. Yeah, and there are Scottish people throwing things at the telly. <laughs> 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 yeah. um, because obviously we, you know what I mean? Yeah. We get annoyed at that, yeah. and um, Scotland and England. These two kingdoms yeah. came together okay. to form the UK, 1707. Uh, six years after that, the Scots went, 
oh shit, we fucked up here, didn't we? Right? And they tried to, in Parliament, in Westminster, they p brought forward a bill to say, can we get out of this? Mm -hmm. And of course, by that time, they were totally outnumbered by English MPs who said, no, right? Yeah. And so, largely, you know, under the Peters, the British Empire grew, a lot of people in Scotland did very well out of the Union. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that that was a very long answer. I'm hoping you're going to edit that down to yes. they lost their shit. Yes, <laughs> oh, yes, yeah. I will. I will. I'll I'll edit it down to people lost their shit and, and we're we're still recovering. Yeah. <laughs> but Bruce, Don't think sprinkles though. Don't forget the sprinkles. Okay. All right. Put the sprinkles on top and the cream, and then say, eh, nah. Uh, Bruce, thank you so much for the history lesson. Um, and that's actually kind of what you do in your videos too. Is it's history. It's a history of Scotland. So how did you get started in this uh, kind of being a history buff? Was that something that you were always interested in? Everything in my life has been an accident. Okay. I, I, I do believe my conception was an accident as well. <laughs> um, I was a physics teacher. Yeah. And then uh, a finance company set up a, a, a computer-based training department. So physics teachers were the kind of people they wanted. Okay. I went and I started to do that and then gradually think I better learn about this business and mm -hmm. I went and I studied and I got all these qualifications and blah 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 and so about 14 years later I find myself I'm working as a financial advisor I hate it I'm mm -hmm. only chasing money it was only because when my son came along mm -hmm. you know you've got that imperative as, as a dad yeah. You know, and because uh, let's be honest, right? However liberated and right on I think I am, I'm still at root. Do you know what I mean? This mm. blokey. Do you know what I mean? No, oh, sisters. You know what I mean? Yes. But yes. you've got that. You know, oh, I better provide. And so you go and you, I, you know, I did a job where you're chasing money, kind of thing. And mm -hmm. I got to thirty nine, yeah. uh, and I don't know if you know this, but at forty, everyone dies, right? Okay. <laughs> Uh, did you ever see Logan's Run? A sci-fi program where they killed everyone at age 30, I think it was. Oh, jeez. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. You know you know your life's going to end soon. And you think, I'm 39, what do I actually want to do with my life? And I thought, do you know, if I, I would be a stand-up comic. And I, I didn't know, how does anyone become a stand-up? It's not like today, there's a lot... You know what I mean? It, you're like, what? Nobody... You know when you go to your careers teacher... Mm -hmm. You know, at the end of school, you've sat your exams, and you yep. go, well, okay, your your maths and your physics and your chemistry is pretty good. Uh, you know, English not so much, but uh, yeah, I think you should go and study science. Okay, I'll do that, and you go and do that. Right. But he never says to you, have you ever thought about doing stand up? Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so there's no kind of anyway. I started to do stand up in clubs and blah 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 blah. Yeah. And then I. I did a show at the Ed are you aware of the Edinburgh Fringe Festival? <gasps> that is my first introductory into Edinburgh and Scotland. I was lucky enough to go over there right in the middle of the festival for two weeks uh, through yeah. my college theatre. And I absolutely loved it and I want to go back. So, yes, yeah. I, am, I am very, very familiar with the Festival Fringe. Right. So anyway. Okay, so for me, like, because lots of people from all over the world say, oh, the Edinburgh Fringe. Whereas yes. for me, it's an eight pound train journey. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so I would, you know, I would get the train down. I would sleep in my own bed yeah. and get the train down in the morning and then right. come back yeah. in the evening, mm. right? <clears throat> and I meet people, I've been performing at festivals in New Zealand and Australia and they, oh, I'd love to go into Edinburgh. And you're like, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Right? <laughs> so, yeah. Um, it's kind of normal, but I would every year I would do a show about some different aspect of Scottish history, and uh, in 2017 I did a show called Macbeth without the Shakespeare bollocks, right? Okay. And yeah, it was, it was about the real historic character Macbeth, right? Ah. Who's very, completely different from the fake news Shakespeare stuff, right? <laughs> you no, know, he was like he reigned for 17 years. I bet yeah. when you read Macbeth, it, you never thought for a minute mm. that this guy was around for 17 years. No, right? no. You, you never for a minute thought there was peace when mm. he was around, prosperity, oh. right? Interesting. But this is the propaganda that um, Shakespeare wrote, okay? Okay, yeah. And so everyone... So 
I did a show about that, and um, and then I thought, do you know what? I know places that I can I can take people, and I know Macbeth stood here, the real Macbeth stood here. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I can take them from Burnham Wood to Dunson and Hill, yeah, and ask them, do you really think that you would have carried a tree from there to there? Do you know what I mean? Right. And um, I th- so I started to do these tours, do tour guide thing. That's how I got into being a tour guide. And, you know, uh, so I was a tour guide by day and a stand-up comic by night. I had the best job in the world and the second best job in the world at the same time. Who gets to do that? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And that was my life for a couple of years. And then COVID decided that neither jobs were viable. (laughs) And now, now, now I'm a YouTuber. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> <I'm a YouTuber. laughs> exactly. So Bruce, you said something interesting. You at the beginning of this interview you said That's that you're as well. <laughs> you had said that your wife had kind of uh, pushed you to start doing uh, videos and put them up on YouTube. Was that something that you had thought about doing beforehand or Um I, I did when I started to do the tour guide Mm-hmm. I made some little videos that I thought would on my website that would advertise my services. Right now, I look back on them and they were shit. Right, <laughs> they were terrible. And the, it, no, that wasn't selling anything to anyone. Right. Yeah. yeah. But now, now I know that, and I hope a year from now I'll look back at what I'm doing now and think that was terrible. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> and because that's progress, isn't it? Do you know what right. I mean? Right. And. Uh, um, so I had some things on my, my site um, and I had time on my hands and um, so it seemed a logical thing to do mm-hmm. I, because I'd spent all my money on Google Ads, mm. you know, to get in all, my, all, all the tours in 2020, all the tours that were booked up, mm. I'd spent money on Google Ads to get the business, Yeah, but all the tours cancelled. Mm. So now I've got I've got no money, right? And I've got no tours. You know, so I'm not. I, so I thought if I make some more of these videos and I make them a bit better, mm-hmm. maybe that'll mean that I don't have to spend the money that I don't have on Google Ads next year. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Oh, for, right. for or wh- whenever this stops, you know, whenever things go back to normal. Yeah. Because uh, I knew when it started, it, it wouldn't be a. I knew it'd be a year. Mm. Because it's, it started kind of. I think my last gig, my last stand-up gig, I think was the twenty eighth of February or something like that. Mm. Mm-hmm. And so we tour guide business is in the summertime, right? Right, right. right. Yeah, because in Scotland, who wants to come to Scotland in winter time? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Is it, is it, dark? Apart from four hours a day, is dark, is cold, and everything shut. Do you know what I mean? Yep. So why would you? Oh, yeah. um, just in case anyone's listening out there, that's my advice to you. If anyone, if, if for some reason, some marketing person or <coughs> a friend says to you, I've got this great idea, we're going to go to Scotland in December, right? <laughs> Run for your life, right? Don't, <laughs> you know they're crazy. They've yes. probably got a, an axe behind, you're going to be in the boot of a car tied up, right? Okay, don't do it. Um, <laughs> so you know that the tours are going to be in the summertime mm-hmm. and I knew that this was going to go through summertime yeah. and I also knew that stand up would be the last thing to come back what a bunch of people in a room squashed together for no good purpose other than to have a laugh mm-hmm. do you know what I mean that's, that's not coming back soon Right. so I thought okay I, and my wife said look because <clears throat> some of my other stand up comic friends went and got jobs stacking shelves in supermarkets or doing anything because we all needed to survive however we could do you know right. what I mean right. and, um, but my wife who's got a proper job you know what I mean uh, she's a physiotherapist right nice. uh, we actually met uh, genuinely we met as a result of a groin strain from playing rugby um, <laughs> yeah now she doesn't play rugby anymore um but she's still a physiotherapist, and that's how we met. And um, so she's got a proper job, and she said, "Look, for a year, I'd rather that you you because people were dying back then, right, right? Right? People are, you know, there's not the same level of hospitalizations or deaths now here in the UK because even with the Omicron thing, 
mm-hmm. because most people are vaccinated it's like uh, do you know what I mean I've got it just now and I'm talking to you uh, right yeah, so yeah. although I'm clearly delirious but at that time it was like oh this is proper scary you know what I mean let's mm-hmm. not so you I've got to go to work but for the next year do what you do <coughs> and I anticipated I'd have no income for a year and we cancelled the uh, satellite television and you know mm-hmm. all the things that we didn't need <laughs> and I started to make videos and um, yeah it's, it's, it's kind of mm-hmm. gone way better than I ever imagined it would <laughs> you know yeah, so. yeah. and now Bruce I, I believe you have a Patreon correct? yeah now the guy the I started in April 2020 I started making these videos yeah and then, and then in September this guy Anthony I can't remember his surname he was from the US mm-hmm. um because culturally, you guys are different from us, right? Yeah. Um, yes and no. I mean, we're y- yes, we we're we're definitely different, but I don't know. I'd like to think we're similar. You know, the whole Western society oh, yeah, type yeah, no, thing. No, don't but, get me wrong. Right. So, like Aussies and Kiwis and Cana- Canucks, is it Canucks? And yeah, Americans yeah. and mm. us, we've got similarities. Yes. I mean? so, yeah. Like, it's all part of the Western world, right? Because mm-hmm. we all come from blah blah blah. Yeah. But you can see cultural differences. Oh, you know definitely. I mean? You can yes. see cultural difference be- differences between Kiwis and Aussies. Mm-hmm. You know oh, right. Yeah. yeah. All right? Yeah. But, but yes, they, they look broadly very similar, but right. you can see cultural differences, nuances. Mm-hmm. Um, but one of the things, because you guys are much more like, it was, uh, this American guy said, why don't you start a Patreon thing? I'll give you money. Right? And I was like, all right, okay, what is this Patreon thing? Yeah. Okay. And so I think it's, it's been established longer over your way. Mm-hmm. And I think there's more of a mentality because you guys have got more of a mentality of everyone pays for what they get or enjoy. Mm-hmm. Whereas we've got much more of a kind of social everyone chips in kind of attitude. Do you know what I mean? Okay, okay, right. yeah, yeah. So... Um, mm-hmm. But it means that kind of it does mean that people kind of expect things to be there, uh-huh. whereas I think Americans kind of think, oh, we better pay for this. Mm. Do, do you know what I mean? Yes, right? yes. Just to kind of take a little tangent here, I've always thought that over in the UK and Scotland and things like that, it's a lot easier to be uh, a stand-up comic or in the entertainment business than it is in the US. Um, I guess uh, to your point, I've I've always looked at the UK as more of a kind of community sense. Like, if you said you want to be in theater, great. Here are five theaters down the street. Go start auditioning or go break into the scene of being a comedian. Whereas when, over in the well, US, it's it's very individualized. It's very who do you know to get into this certain place, uh, and it's not always guaranteed that you'll get a paycheck at the end of the day. Yeah. We tend to follow you guys, and I, I don't think that's always a good thing. Clearly, in mm-hmm. some cases, a good thing. Yeah. <clears throat> in some cases, a bad thing. But your country was built differently. Right. You know I mean? right. It was built on the, by those people that went, we're going to go and get this shit, and you stay there, and we'll bring it back, and I'm going to make some money, and do you know what I mean? <laughs> and we were the guys that went, nah, do you know what? I'm just going to stay and watch your football. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so, so there's a different, your country was built differently. Do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, whereas our country was built way back by yeah. feudal overlords, do you know what I mean? Right, right. And there, you know, you had the Victorian era of, you know, um, it doesn't matter. But the point is, there's that slight tipping's an interesting thing. And yes. as a as a tour guide, I've been given tips that are ridiculous. Do you know what I mean? That you like that doesn't even make sense. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And don't get me wrong, I'm glad you enjoyed the thing. Yeah. But I was giving you that anyway. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Right? You did, there was no happy ending, right? Do you, know what I mean? <laughs> you, you got what you were getting, right? Right. And I'll I'll go out of my way to make your experience as good as I can because I want you to talk about Scotland. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So whether without any personal gain to myself, I want people to go away and go, do you know what, the Scots are such lovely people, right? right? 
mm-hmm. and um, it's it's kind of embarrassing actually when um, because you you've charged them the fee. Yeah, you know I mean, yeah. you you thought was the the fee, and um, th- there's just some people it's different because some people have said, "Do I tip you now?" And you no, right? Mm-hmm. And some people then go, "There's." And sometimes it's like a ridiculous amount of money to me. Yeah. And you go, no, 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 that's not. Oh, no, but you must have it. And you end up having a, a, a fist fight in the street because this guy wants to give you money for nothing. Do you know what I mean? Right? <laughs> it's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Whereas, bizarrely, you, you know where tipping comes from? No. So it's to ensure promptness. Tip, oh, really? To ensure promptness. And in the the London coffee shops of the uh, 18th century, and to make sure you got your drink first, you would give a tip to ensure promptness so you didn't have to wait and blah, 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 blah. Okay, right? yeah. Now, when the Americas were doing all the rebellious thing, because you know what you're like, you lot. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. The, the, there was a much more egalitarian attitude that how dare you think that and that's kind of my attitude is well you think that you giving me money is going to make me do something for you know you know what I mean benefit the upper classes okay. you know what I mean yeah. and status and uh, privilege and all this kind of thing mm-hmm. so Americans were very against tipping and somehow the tables have turned mm-hmm. yeah yeah. And here in the UK, like we'll, I'll always tip if if I'm at a, if I go out for a meal mm-hmm. or something like mm-hmm. that. But there's, you know, other than that, y- you'd feel uncomfortable. Do you know what I mean? There's something uncomfortable about that whole kind of. Mm-hmm. I don't mind leaving some money on the table for the girl or the guy. Let's not be sexist about it. Yeah. To, mm-hmm. do you know what I mean? Yeah. But come get your dishes. But the idea of here. It's just, mm. do you know what I mean? The the kind of that sense that you need to give somebody something. I had a guy, <laughs> and um, I, 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 there were two Texan couples I was showing around. Mm. Actually, I took them to Dunfermline Abbey, okay, which is where Robert the Bruce is buried. You know our, our great warrior king. Yes, yes, Robert the Bruce, uh, yes. Chris Pine, and the Outlaw King. Mm-hmm. Have you seen the Outlaw King? Yes. Right. Okay. Yep. So that guy. Yep. Yep. Some, I don't know. I don't know if anyone's still watching. They've probably switched to another channel, right? <laughs> but if anyone's still watching or listening, is this a watch here or a listen? This it's is just a, it's a, a listen. It's a listen. All right. Christopher Pine was the guy in Outlaw King. In case they've never heard of Robert the Bruce, our our great hero, King. Mm-hmm. I took them to the 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 place where he's buried at Dunfermline Abbey right next door to where Andrew Carnegie was born okay, okay. and um, on the other side of it was where the guy that named Pittsburgh Pittsburgh was born and I know you guys call it Pittsburgh because yes. you can't pronounce it correctly <laughs> <laughs> we can't pronounce a lot of things correctly Bruce yeah, it's, it's the curse yeah. <laughs> so the I, I took the I took them to to this place and the, the the parking there was no parking so I said look let me let you off here you go into the abbey I'll find parking and I'll come and get you okay and so I dropped them off and I went around and I found parking and I went back to the the abbey and I walked into the abbey and as I went in the, the woman the old lady you know you, you have these old ladies who are knitted she's like, oh yeah because it's not like a public you know, it's a private, it's actually a church, you know what I mean? Right. So it's one of the old ladies from the congregation, right? It's not like one of the, do you know what I mean, this tourism mm-hmm. host kind of thing. Yeah. And this old lady, and I said, excuse me, I'm looking for, I dropped off some people from Texas uh, here. Did did you see them come in? And uh, no, no, I didn't. I was like, oh, damn it, right? Because I've dropped them at the gate. They've not managed to get mm-hmm. from the gate to the door. And I'm like, mm. what did I do? And in there's a whole kind of compound, and I went. There's a library, and I went into the library, and they're not there. And I go around, and there's the the palace grounds, and I went around, and I'm going around, and I'm now panicking yeah. because I haven't left them 
you know, contact, and I'm in the aware of the gone, and I'm responsible for these people. And what if somebody dies? And it'll be terrible, and it'll all be my fault. And and then I, I'm, I'm I'm retracing my steps, and I go back into the abbey, and I say, listen, and I saw them. I saw the, the, the these. The, these two couples from Texas, mm-hmm. and I said to the old lady, I said, "Those are the people I were I was looking for. Did they not?" She said, "Oh yes, they came in, but they weren't wearing the hats. Do you know what <laughs> I mean? Like she assumed they would have steps and hats on, right? Yeah. Okay. Oh, well, that's, anyway, that's so when I, I had a great time. I, I looked after these people for a week, mm-hmm. and um, but one of the days we were in Inverness, and the guy. And one of the guys, somebody, I got to pick them up, and somebody had, he was an older guy, Okay. and at the top of the stairs, there, there was a lift in the place, and at the stairs, this guy, the, an, another resident, like, it wasn't a member of staff or something like that, had said, oh, do you want a hand with your case, <laughs> and he's taking the guy's case down the stairs, and the guy's come down, he said, thanks very much, gone in his pocket, and tip the guy, and I'm like, no! Why would you do that? Why would you do that? Do you know what I mean? And I was shamed, right? You've just treated him like a servant. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and he thought he was doing a good thing, right? Right? Mm-hmm. And I thought, no, you've just embarrassed me. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> and it's interesting how just people see things differently, don't they? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes. Very so true. when I say there are cultural differences. They still got all the references that I talked about, and you know, if I told them stories, you know, they and I knew about the Alamo, and mm-hmm. you know, do you know what I mean? There's loads of cultural references that we share, right, right. But there are still differences, like mm-hmm. old women expect all Texans to be wearing stets and hats, and Texans <laughs> expect that they should give money to all and sundry when all they're doing is just being helpful. Do you know what I mean? Right, so, right. Oh, funny. So, Bruce, to to bring it back to YouTube and and your tours. Oh, sorry, have I been I've been rambling? No, no. <laughs> can, we just, no. Can, can we just bring bring things back to the point of this discussion? Yeah. Please? No, Bruce, you're totally fine. <laughs> That's like I said. This is all about you, not about me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I like those conversations. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, I I enjoy those conversations. Yes. So with tours and things like that, obviously you had to cancel because of twenty twenty. Uh, twenty twenty one kind of sounds like maybe there were a couple tours in there for you, or had it been really spotty? Yeah, I, I did one or two, mm-hmm. but not a lot. I think uh, once or twice in September. Yeah. October. I actually had a lady from California who and her daughter who I was looking after on the 23rd. I took them out and we did some stuff. Yeah. And I was due to take them out on the 5th. Mm-hmm. And uh, I told them, don't come. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I said, it's winter in Scotland, don't come. But they said, well, we're booked anyway and we're supposed to come before. And, and, but I was supposed to take them out on the 5th. But now I can't because I've got to stay in the dungeon. <laughs> um, until I'm better, yeah. but I've got I, I, I've arranged for a friend to take them out. So, mm-hmm. but the thing is now, the YouTube thing is the thing. Yeah, you know what I mean, yes, and it's not the thing because you miss you still enjoy those lovely little experiences of you know uh, they're not wearing the hats don't happen <laughs> when you're making a YouTube video. Do you know what I mean? Right, right. Um, that's only when you meet people and you and you, you get that, that's the interesting thing. That's a lovely thing about being a tour guide, especially if you spend. A few days with people, yeah. Because normally, people they're on holiday and they're good fun to be with, right? Only very occasionally, you know, you get you know, this is a long day. Do you know what I mean, right? <laughs> but normally, uh, we don't get, we don't get Canadians that much. <laughs> um, so that that was a joke, right? That was a joke, just in case, <laughs> <laughs> right? That I was, I was pandering to an American audience there. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> um, the, Canada, sign up for Bruce's tours. <laughs> <laughs> no, normally people the people are great fun to be with, and you mm-hmm. you can see the world from within your own car. You know what I mean? Right. As you take people around, you you get you know you show Indian people around, you get to understand India a little bit better. Yeah. You know from the horse's mouth, you get to understand. I I'm, I'm, I think I understand. Americans much better than I did three years ago, mm. and as much as I don't think there's a typical American, 
you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Right? Whereas, you know, before I started being a tour guide, we would have this idea mm-hmm. of, you know, this homogeneous group. And people <laughs> have that idea people have that idea about Scotland. Mm-hmm. Whereas here we go, no, there's like everyone speaks with a different accent depending on where you go. And, you know, that you have different attitudes, different political views, different wealth, like blah 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 blah. It's yeah. not a homogeneous group. Mm-hmm. But everyone looks out is to make things simple. You know, everyone looks at another group and goes, oh, they're, that's what they're like. Mm-hmm. And the good thing about, you know, having, you know, Kiwis, Aussies, uh, Americans, Canadians, Indians, they're the main group. They're, they're the main people. They're the main uh, nationalities. Yeah. You, you learn, a, you, you get to understand them a little bit more and realise that in actual fact, there's not, there's no kind of homogeneous group anywhere. You know what I mean? There's a diverse mm-hmm. group of people um, all over the world, and they right. do have traits in, in common. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's nice. It's nice meeting people. Yes, and you, yeah. you don't you don't do that when you're making the YouTube videos. Mm. But mm-hmm. the thing is, nobody's going to stop me making YouTube videos. But this Very week, true. I'll make a video, but I'll make it in in the dungeon here. Do you know what I mean? Oh, there you go. Nice. So I still, I'll still, you know what I mean? I'll still do the thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, it's, it's nice. It's lovely, and it's it's what's great is. You know, you talked about your excitement coming to Scotland for the first mm-hmm. time. Mm-hmm. And what is great is seeing Scotland through other people's eyes. Mm. You know, you're driving along and you go, wow, look at that. And you go, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because yep. you drive that road every day. I, I right. remember we were driving near where I live. Mm-hmm. And, like, where I live, Perthshire, where I live, the Highland Line crosses... So there's a, there's a fault line, a geological fault line that goes across Scotland, right? Mm-hmm. And south of it, the north part used to be attached to North America way back. You know, okay, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. When we were one millennia. giant continent. Millions of years ago, right? Mm-hmm. And the southern part was attached to it, right? So the, the, there's a fault line there. And when you drive, I mean, within a couple of miles, there's, the change is sudden, right? Mm-hmm. Perthshire, that fault line goes through my county, okay? Oh. So when you're driving around South Perthshire, there are in the, there are these rolling lowland hills, mm-hmm. and then you you go into North Perthshire, you cross the Highland boundary, and you've got these mountains, right, rocky oh. mm-hmm. mountains, mm-hmm. and it's quite sudden. And anyway, we're driving around the lowland rolling hills with somebody once, and uh, on the way to do, and they were going, oh, this is incredible, this is the landscape's fantastic, and I thought. If you think this is good, you're going to shit yourself when I take you. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. to see somebody else looking on, and it was on like a, a motorway. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That I drive all the time and would never yeah. think twice of. Mm-hmm. And then when you go to these beautiful places, and you know, sometimes you know, right? You're driving around this corner, and you know, in a mile around this corner, there's going to be this beautiful view. Yeah. And you look out the side of your eyes, just waiting and watching for when they see it. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> And they go, oh, I knew that would happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's a beautiful, it's a beautiful experience mm-hmm. to have. You yeah. know what I mean? When people see your country mm-hmm. uh, in that way, you know? Yeah. But Bruce, you know, on on a very personal note, I just, I, I want to thank you for putting together these videos and giving everyone a taste of Scotland and, and the history of Scotland too. I mean, there's so many little things and little nuances that I never knew about Scotland. So thank you so much for being able to open up the world to people like me who are stuck in Duluth, Minnesota, USA. <laughs> yeah, I made them I make them specifically for Duluth, Minnesota. Okay, that, perfect. That, that, <laughs> All right, excellent. Excellent. <laughs> Wonderful. And now, Bruce, uh, despite having COVID, uh, hopefully here it, just with a week, hopefully it's over mm. in a week, uh, you've yeah. got more videos coming up. Uh, what are you looking forward to in 2022? Are you looking at getting back into doing tours, uh, more videos, possibly some stand-up? Yeah, as I said, my life's an accident, just one accident after another. But I've got I, yeah, I've had one burn supper cancelled because of the whole Omicron thing. Yeah. I'm supposed to be performing at a burn supper for um, the Scottish government, right, uh, in, in Dublin. Mm-hmm. If that comes off, they'll realise what a mistake they made. <laughs> <laughs> so, and this is a great thing, because so, I was going to, the, the, 
uh, I'm going to do some stand up for a week in Northern Ireland. You know, because yeah. a lot of you guys keep banging on about asking me to make videos about the Scotch Irish, as you call them. So hopefully there'll be an opportunity for me to to do when I'm over in Northern Ireland mm -hmm. uh, to make some stuff about the Scotch Irish and uh, you know make James Connolly as an Irish Republican who was born in Edinburgh but um, yeah. executed in Dublin after the, the Easter Risings. So my hope, I, and I've got a, a somebody, this camper van hire company are giving me a camper van for two weeks to travel around the Scottish English border and make videos. And so that's my whole goal in life is to travel, because there's so much of Scotland that I've still not seen. Right. There's so many stories that I've still to find out about Scotland. Yeah, That's the, the, the hope is that I, I live out my days, you know, zipping around Scotland and telling people stories about it. Mm -hmm. um, and even, we've got a big connection with France, and there's like towns in France that are Scottish towns, and oh. uh, there's a town in Italy, there's a Scottish mm -hmm. town where they play the bagpipes and where the kilts, and you know, and getting into the stories about how all that came about whilst allowing me mm -hmm. to go and explore that's my ambition is that um, I just you know I'm this old man who's very sprightly mm -hmm. and still able to go and explore places and tell bring people stories of the people places and events from Scottish history you know what I mean right yeah, yeah Bruce that's absolutely perfect and that sounds like a dream come true uh, from the bottom of my heart uh, thank you for putting these things together and putting them out there so people can explore the world around them and not like we were talking earlier live in their little bubbles it's it's great yeah. that people are able to do this and and that you're doing it as well thank you so much it's mm -hmm. it's opened my eyes it, not yeah. just to scotland but to the wider world as well so thank you so much and bruce if somebody wants to reach out to you to either see what you've got for comedy or uh, book a tour with you how can they do that uh, I've got a website www.scotlandhistorytours.co.uk or info at email info at scotlandhistorytours.co.uk they'll find me if they go onto YouTube and search for Scotland History Tours <laughs> they'll find me do you know what I mean yeah yeah and, and we'll, we'll see we'll see where 2022 takes us do you know what I mean right and and that's all we can do right now it's uh it's 2022 it's a new year yeah let's plow forward Woohoo! Woo <laughs> Bruce, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to talk with me in the wider world about Scotland history and your tours and your comedy and being a teacher and everything else that you got going in your life. It's it's absolutely fabulous and it's wonderful to hear that you haven't s sat still. I mean, it it sounds like you've taken on you these many that? different hats. Shedovia. Shedovia. <laughs> it's a Gallic, Gallic phrase that means you're welcome. Chedovia. It means it's your life. Wonderful. It's your life. Chedovia. Yeah. Chedovia. I like it. Chedovia. Yeah. Chedovia. So. Okay. I like it. Right. All right. You're welcome. Fabulous, sir. This will not be the last time we speak. Hopefully, I can uh, get to Scotland and take a tour. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and who knows? Who knows? But the thing is, this it's like every time. You know, when you climb a hill, yeah. and every time. You think you're at the top of the hill, and then you see another one, <laughs> and it feels like that. That every time you think, you know, because gigs started up, tours started up, and then Omicron mm -hmm. comes along, and you don't know that just when you think you're getting a grip of that, then something else, and it just it feels like a really uncertain time. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So who knows? Who knows? <laughs> but if, I'll be here. Good. I'll be here, be here too. <laughs> Ciao.